everyone, welcome back. Today we will be texturing our um, character. So in the last time when I UV unwrapped, I showed you how to create a new texture and apply it to the material. So I'm just going to quickly recap that. So in the UV panel on the left hand side here, you create a new image and then you click that, you save that image with Alt S and then on the right hand side in on, when you click the, the mesh under the materials panel click new I usually tend to like to use nodes so if you click use nodes you can open up a new panel and over there you can pretty much input the image texture that you're gonna paint on and put it into the actual material into the actual figure so let's begin As you can see, I've already picked a base color and it's kind of pinkish, skinnish color. It took me a while to get um, it close to where I want it to be because I'm not really a good um, animator or artist in general. So it took me a while to just get colors right. So stuff like this is a lot of trial and error. But the important thing in this video is I want to show you how to texture a, uh, how to add layers to a texture. So layers are really important because if you want, if you already have a base color and you don't want to make changes to it because you want to, for example, give her different kinds of makeup, then you don't have to redo the base every time. You have the same base and then you just add a new layer for different types of makeup every time. And right now I'm just painting onto the base mesh, which I really shouldn't be doing. And later on you'll see me change my mind and add a new uh, layer. But I think for now I was just really trying to see what kind of base color I should stick with because I don't know it just looks really bad but I think later on I realized that when you actually view it from the materials perspective when you add lights and stuff and shadows and everything the colors look a lot better So I've created a new material and I'm just gonna pause here and let you see um, what the nodes look like. Now I didn't record this because my computer can't keep up with recording, it takes too long. Um, basically on the bottom left hand corner you can see the nodal um, look. So what hap how do I so the question was how do I layer materials? And so the red one is the output, which is what you see. The green one is the principal VDSF. Um, this is what most people use for, for example, you can change the transparency of the material, the reflectivity, the roughness, etc. The yellow one is a mix RGB um, shader. And the two orange boxes are the two image textures that I applied. The first one is the base color and the second one is the layer I call makeup. So I created two separate images, one called base, one called makeup. I've connected both of them into the mix RGB shader. The um, alpha for the second layer, which is the layer on top, the makeup layer, um, the alpha of that becomes the factor. You'll connect that to the factor in the mix RGB shader so that um, make sure that when you create the alpha image, you you make sure that the alpha turns to zero. You turn that to zero. So that's pretty much it. So I'm still trying to decide on the base color. And right now I'm painting on the base layer because I decided uh, if I pick a co good color that I like, I'm just going to paint over all of it in the base color. I'm still not painting on the makeup one yet. Now I'm painting on the makeup because on the top left hand corner you can see that the alpha in the background is, is basically nothing, is black. So remember when you create a new material, make sure you turn the alpha panel from 1 to 0 so that there's no color in the second layer until you paint on it. So I'm giving her a bit of cheek, um, pink cheeks.
Maybe I really should learn how to put makeup on before I make more textures with girls in makeup. Okay, so for the inside of the eyes, I'm gonna basically take the skin color but turn down the, um, the shader. But make it a bit darker so you can get kind of like contouring shape. Yeah, I kind of skipped over that, but basically I gave her a bit of eye red eyeshadow. And so right now I'm adding the texture of the eyelashes. So remember in the last video, uh, previous videos, we made eyelashes. So for that, I create a new um, image. And I basically took this off of the internet of eyelashes. The reason why I took it as black background and white eyelashes is because later on, we can make it such that all the black becomes transparent so you just and then we turn the white color into black so you just see black eyelashes as if it's you know individual strands now a lot of people for example use particle systems where you just you know put a hair particle on the eye and make it look like real eyelashes now those are a bit more um those those kind of kill my computer so i decided this was pretty much good enough but in order to make sure it looks like that on the model in the materials tab you need to click alpha hashed on on both uh, you need to click alpha hashed alpha hashed on the right hand side that's what you can see over here in the settings uh, material settings panel and I basically do the same with the lower eyelashes Okay, so yes, for the bottom eyelashes, I pretty much use the same image, and um, I wanted to use, you know, the the second row of eyelashes, but I don't think it was visible enough, so I I think. So yeah, I try that now, and it's not visible enough. Okay, it's not looking very good, so I just shifted everything up. And the, so right now I'm painting the base mesh where I'm just painting the, the whole head black. Because later on when we add hair, if the hair is even a little bit transparent, you're gonna see the scalp. So I thought I might as well just paint the scalp black and take the specular to zero. think of it, I probably should have painted it on a second layer so that I can change the hair color too, but um, I'm just adding a bit more fine detail. So I took a darker hint uh, of black and then reduced my brush size to make it look more like there's, you know, individual hair strands coming up. Like, you know, if you have your hair tied like this. That's looking pretty okay. So as you can see there, I just adjusted the sun. So I just put more sunshine onto her face and you can see um, very bright face. And for the hair, I pretty much did the exact same thing for the, as I did for the eyelashes. And you can see on the top left hand corner, that was the, 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 the picture that I used. Now for the body, um, for example, the shirt and the pants, I'm not gonna show you the UV unwrapping stuff because it's pretty easy. And for the texturing, I just want to say that all my textures I get from the following websites. Um, they're free and you can get up to like four or, or up to 16 pictures a day, which is really nice. 
and the pictures not only give you the base color but they give you for example the roughness the normal the height ambient occlusion etc and so it makes the texture look really realistic and so in order to add that into the for example the shirt and the jeans i usually just use three i use the base color for so that that's the top the picture there you see i use the roughness color which is that one and the last one is the normal or the height that you know how much it protrudes out so i do the same so i do that for the shirt and the pants i got a denim fabric and a cotton kind of uh, fabric This is also why I like modeling everything separately because you can, when you model everything separately, you can just work on them, and then when you join them together, Blender automatically just joins the objects together without the colors, you know, seeping into other bits of the body. So, and you can detach them easily. So it's very customizable. So for the pants, I got a denim fabric. Another thing is that, for example, there you saw, you see the shape looks very jagged, and to make it look more fine, you just scale up the UV texture in the UV um, port, and then it will look because you know if the yeah that you um you had you 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 could you do. I guess I didn't record this, but for the rest of the jeans, you know, the little pockets and the extra bits. For that, I used the same jeans material when I unwrapped it, but I also went over the edges of it with a with a really um, dark brown colors to mimic the seams, the, um, the sewing seams that you see in normal jeans. And um, so here's the final result. And thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time where we'll start rigging the the character.